Hey everyone, you're listening to Phenomenal Speak. I'm your host, Sway, and I'm excited to be starting this with you guys. We're going to be covering a few different topics on this show, everything that is relative to current events and everything that's going on in the world. First, we're going to start with minority excellence, where we're going to highlight the different things that minorities are doing to change uh, the way the world is seen. Then we're going to go into what's new, where we highlight all of the topics going on in Indy, in the U.S., around the world, all of that. Uh, Then we're going to go into the health um, and wellness. It's called wellness and self-care, because I don't think we talk about how to take care of ourselves nearly enough we need to know how to be the best versions of ourselves possible and that's something i'm trying to be here for and then finally we're going to have our weekly wisdom where we just talk about some kind of inspiration or thought that's going to get us through the week and keep us pushing and make us even better hopefully something that we can even share with our friends so let's jump right into it First things first, minority excellence. I have a couple today. First, we're going to highlight Bailey Dayton. She became the first black Miss Missouri recently, um, following up on Miss Deshauna Barber, uh, who also became Miss USA, our first uh, military service member to take the crown, also um, a black woman. Bailey Dayton, actually, she is a Baylor grad, 23 years old, a flight attendant and print model. Um, She is going for the title of Miss USA and Miss Universe. And personally, as a woman of color, this is amazing to me because I remember being a young girl and not being able to see any faces that look like mine in those pageants and being a little bit discouraged, thinking that I couldn't do something like that when obviously that wasn't the case. So... I am probably speaking for a lot of different people when I say we're rooting for Miss Dayton and Miss Barber and everything that they're doing and changing the face of pageantry. Congratulations, you guys. Um, Next on Minority Excellence, we are going to discuss um, an issue that's actually going on around the world, but this particular instance happened in Pretoria, South Africa. There are a group of high school girls that are protesting for their right to wear their natural hair. So for my listeners that might not be familiar with the term natural hair, that directly means a person of ethnic descent or color that chooses not to relax their hair, hence making it straighter um, and honestly degrading the texture of their hair, Uh, hence the natural movement and a lot of women choosing to wear their froze, including myself. So the leader of this um, young girls movement is a 13 year old, my God. Her name is Zuleika Platel, and this is a name you guys might wanna remember because I have a feeling we're gonna hear more about her. She and her friends' um, classmates are protesting a policy that the school has against natural hair. The policy actually states that natural hair is messy. Um, The petition that they have against it right now is to end the policy. It already has 18,000 signatures, but to my knowledge, um, has not taken effect yet. The students uh, were warned even not to use their native African languages. And personally, I find this to be incredible considering they (laughs) are living in South Africa and they can't wear their natural hair nor speak their natural language, especially as a woman here in Indiana. I would be completely floored if I was not able to proudly wear my hair nor speak my native tongue, but that is me. Uh, the girls were actually quoted as saying that teachers told them they need to flatten their hair somehow and they need to make themselves look presentable because the way that their hair naturally grew from their head was not presentable enough. Um, and Patel actually said, it's about time black girls or black children's cries are heard. And I second that, Zuleika. That is exactly why we are here today. And we are expressing all of these sentiments so that we can be heard and so that our uh, natural hair and our natural beauty can be appreciated for what it is and for what it always has been. Don't forget, you're listening to The Campus Citizen here on Radio Free Indy. 
Now, what's new? There is a lot of newness going on considering all of the elections, the news, everything. But today we're just going to highlight three important topics. Um, First was Monday's governor's debate. For those who don't know who our candidates are, they are Greg Holcomb, John Gregg, and Rex Bell, who is uh, the Libertarian candidate. We had the governor's debate at the University of Indianapolis, and we got some highlights from the Indy Star on some of the issues that were covered during the debate, as well as some of the feedback that we got from Hoosiers. But just to go into some of the topics, a lot of what they disagreed on were economic issues, set them all apart. Um, Greg acknowledged that we do have a wage decrease here in Indianapolis, and he did express his his advocacy for anti-discrimination laws, um, particularly in relation to RIFRA, which has been controversial. Uh, Bell, on the other hand, plans to scrap property taxes in order to reverse what seems to be a dry spell with businesses coming into Indiana as a result of RIFRA and other policies that were put in place by Mike Pence. Uh, They went on, Greg and Holcomb agreed that the Regional Cities Initiative that was started by Mike Pence was a great idea and they actually plan to continue that initiative. But as we listened to what the people had to say, a lot of them thought that Greg and Holcomb were actually very similar. They expected them to be a little bit different um, or to vary in some ways, but they found some consistency between the two candidates. They were also relieved that this was such a peaceful debate. They seemed to be getting very used to the voting process becoming hostile and drama-filled because of the current presidential race. And I, for one, want to remind everyone, as someone who is civically engaged, this is not the way that politics should go, especially not a presidential election, any election for that matter. It should be, as this debate was, focused on the issues, focused on the people, how Uh, Both of those can be combined in order to better our state. And it looks like that was done very successfully. So if you need any more highlights about that, I recommend you go to the IndyStar.com, Indianapolis Recorder. There are plenty of news outlets. If you need any, I'm going to give you my contact information at the end of the show so you can contact me directly and we can talk about it. Next up on what's new Voter registration, it is that time, guys. The deadline to register to vote is October 11th, very, very soon. The November election is on the 8th. We will be electing a number of representatives, not just for president, but our governors, our congressmen, the people that matter here in the city and are actually most tied to everything we have going on, most critical to our needs. So again, October 11th is the deadline. November 8th is election day. If you need any help trying to register, hop over to indianavoters.in.gov. Again, indianavoters.in.gov. You have a lot of options on that website. You can review the candidates if you're not familiar with them, update your voter registration, find a polling place, as well as learn more about early voting, which is done downtown at the city county building. If you need an absentee ballot, the city county building should be able to help you with that as well. If not, again, I'm giving you my contact information at the end of this, and I will help you um, get your voter registration and early voting as soon as possible, because everyone's voice is critical right now. Finally, on what's new, we have a story about a wrongfully convicted man who has been petitioning a new trial. The man's name is Keith Cooper, and he was convicted of armed robbery in 1997 and sentenced to 40 years in prison. Uh, He served 10 years for that crime, and within that 10 years, it took him seven years to petition a release for wrongful imprisonment. It looks like he sent Uh, his letter to Pence's office, but Pence's office sent a letter back to his attorney on September 20th and asked him to pursue um, exoneration through the courts first. And anyone who has an idea of the legal process knows that going through the court system 
is a very unpredictable, very, very time consuming and exhausting process that this man was going through as he was in jail. Um, He was released actually, and he is now residing in Chicago, but his felony record does still stand again, although the evidence has proven that he was innocent. So I just want to take a second for you guys to realize what that means. Because that this felony is on his record, it will be increasingly difficult for him to find gainful employment, to find adequate housing. He more than likely will not be able to register to vote unless policies change as a convicted felon, even though it was wrongful. A lot of his life has been cut short, not just by being incarcerated, but by the effects of getting out of the incarceration system. So certainly my prayers are with Keith Cooper and his family. Um, It looks like he's already making some progress and a little headway, and I just hope that it continues. He didn't deserve this, and I I know a lot of people that have suffered at the hands of wrongful imprisonment and have seen the effects firsthand. It's not easy, but again, prayers are with him. He's going to make it through it. Next, we are going into wellness and self-care. But before that, we are you are listening to The Campus Citizen here on Radio Free Indy. So into wellness and self-care. Mental health is something we seem to have made a shameful topic like it's a cuss word mental health but we're going to talk about it a lot on this show because it directly affects me a lot of the people i love as well as a lot of kids on our campus community there are so many negative stigmas of mental health uh, such as you know you're crazy i hate that word crazy is a terrible word especially for someone who is suffering through a mental battle And really the effects of our current events have a huge effect on our mental health, health, particularly as a minority community. When we see all of these wrongdoings to us on YouTube and on Facebook, the killings, uh, the violence, shameless violence, it does cause what is known as racial trauma. This is a real thing, guys. It's it's a real term. Um, It is race-based traumatic stress injury that can be a consequence of emotional pain that a person may feel after encounters with racism, um, which can be understood in terms of specific types of acts, as I've already mentioned with uh, police shootings and brutality, everything of that nature. Recently, if you've picked up the Indianapolis Recorder, which I do on a regular basis, you'll find on one of the covers a shoot by a local artist named Rahima McNeil, who I've had the pleasure of working with. She's a great woman. Um, Shortly after another one of our recent shootings, she put on a shoot downtown, a photo shoot, and it is called Point Blank. Basically, what she did is took a group of black males and painted red targets on their back. They're shirtless with red targets on their backs outside of the city county building as well as other monuments downtown. You see images of young black men, I would say maybe even three or four, also with red targets with their fists held high. Um, All of these these pictures are of men in submission. Either they look like they've been shot down or their hands are up against their head. And what Rahima was really trying to do in this was create a visual aid so that the world could see uh, how what people of color go through every day and how we and how we see the world on a daily basis. Um, the constant fear that honestly a lot of our demographic lives under she captured very well through photo. And when I was looking at this, the first thing I thought of was the racial trauma that it represents. The fact that this photo shoot actually needed to take place in order to wake some people up and get some people talking is completely amazing to me. But Rahima has done a great job, an artistic job, um, at exemplifying some things that we are going through right now. Um, As well in this same article of the star, you could go back to where a good friend of mine, Ebony Chappelle, amazing writer, 
She has an article on black self-care for traumatic moments. And while the title is black self-care, it can be self-care for anybody. Let's not let it just be about one race. We all have traumatic events in our lives that we have to learn how to deal with. And Ebony offered five great points on how to deal with these and to recover from them. Number one was turn video autoplay off. So on your Facebook, on your Instagram, all of that, there is a setting that you can turn off autoplay so that when you're scrolling through, those videos of people killing each other or being killed, um, anything that could be traumatic to you, you don't have to see that. You might not even understand the effects that that has on your mind, but things like that do stick with you in the long run and no one wants to carry that with them. So definitely turn um, video autoplay off if you're trying to reduce the stress of these traumatic moments. Second, follow accounts that inform and nurture. I do this personally. I love motivation. I love inspiration. So rather than follow the pages that have all the negativity, all of the violence, everything that I really don't want to put into my spirit, I turn to possibly T.D. Jakes' Instagram or maybe some other artists that I just find magnificent and inspirational so I can get that positivity um, and that energy. If you guys need any recommendations for who to follow, a few examples of these accounts would be Julia Craven, Wesley Lowry, Jamil Smith, just to name a few. But if you need maybe spelling or anything like that, just contact me at the end of the show and I'll be happy to introduce you to some positive outlets. Third, biggest one, ignore the trolls, y'all. Just ignore them. This goes even outside of this article because there are so many people that use the internet as a facade. Um, they use it as their courage because they can't say certain things to your face. And these are the definition of trolls. The negativity that people are feeding you and sending you via the internet or by any means, um, ignore it. Don't let it affect you. It only has as much power as you give it. So with that said, just turn the other cheek, be the bigger person and go about your happiness because at the end of the day, those trolls by definition, are miserable. That's what a troll is. They're miserable people, and they're just trying to share that misery with you. Nobody wants that. No one needs that. So ignore them. Fourth, log off. I do this a lot, probably more than my friends and family would like. (laughs) I will disconnect very often because in this generation, it seems like we forget what it feels like to not be around our cell phones or our iPads or our laptops, but... It's actually very refreshing. It reduces a lot of anxiety and stress. You breathe easier, you think easier. Let go of it for a second. Take a walk, write in a journal, watch a movie, do anything productive that makes you happy. Just stay away from the internet for a little bit. Just slight hiatus, I promise. It'll be back once you're ready. Um, Remember, last but not least, Offline conversations are just as important as online conversations. In my personal opinion, I value my in-person conversations more so than my online ones because you build a bigger connection, a lot better connection with that face-to-face and eye-to-eye contact. Um, Online is not the only way to talk to one another. And as a communications major, I've found that it can sometimes be the most ineffective way because there's so much room for interpretation. There is no tone. Sometimes you can misread what your speaker is saying. So to have those in-person interactions is absolutely crucial and something that we're kind of losing in this day and age. And I would like to see come back. So again, five Uh, self-care rules turn video autoplay off follow accounts that inform and nurture ignore the trolls log off and remember offline conversations are just as important as the online conversations and finally guys this brings me to my weekly wisdom this is a quote from Mahatma Gandhi one of my favorite people in the world It is unwise to be too sure of one's own wisdom. 
it is healthy to be reminded that the strongest might weaken and the wisest might err. What Gandhi was telling us here is the wisdom that is in humility. He was teaching us the virtue of humility, really. How often do we let ourselves get our heads in the clouds, let our head get big, and we just, we're feeling ourselves. That's how we say it, you know? You're just feeling yourself, you're the stuff, and you very well could be. You need to have that confidence. Confidence is crucial in this day and age, but with that confidence, you do need a little bit of humbleness, and I'm speaking to myself when I say this as well. We need to consider others first um, and ourselves second. You know, if we did that, we would be such a better world. <laughs> if we did that, we probably wouldn't even need to elect another president. So that's what I really want us to take with us after this show is consider other people before yourself, even if it's just for one day. Do something nice for a stranger. Say something sweet to a loved one. Send love in some kind of way that is selfless and giving because you want to know what all of that good karma and all of that good energy comes back to you and it does bring you honor and even beyond that it just makes you feel great as a human being so thank you so much for tuning in and being an informed member of our indie community if you have anything that you want to discuss or you're interested in being interviewed um, you can find me on facebook instagram twitter everything <laughs> facebook my name is consuela victoria k-o-n-s-w-e-l-l-a and then victoria traditional v-i-c-t-o-r-i-a if that's too much for you i am on instagram and twitter both of those names is under phenomenal speak the name of the show don't forget to keep up with the Campus Citizen and Radio Free Indie and stay connected to all the cool things happening around town. Peace to you and yours, and I love you with a servant's heart. Until next time. Thanks again for listening to Radio Free Indie and the Campus Citizen.